All right, time to dive in. Today, uh, we're tackling perfect. Oh, yeah. That tricky German tense. The one that lets you talk about everything you've done. Exactly. All those cool stories in German. Our guides today are Kapitel 6 from Spectrum Deutsch. Ah, good old Spectrum Deutsch. And a really interesting YouTube video about verbs that like to hang out with sein in the perfect tense. Oh, that's a good one. This will be fun, especially if the past tense has been giving you a headache. Yeah, perfect is super important if you want to talk about what you did yesterday or tell some awesome stories in German. Totally. So let's start with the basics. What is perfect exactly? Mm. And why is it so essential for speaking German? Okay, so perfect is how you express completed actions in the past. You know, like saying, I did this or this happened, but in a way that really emphasizes that it's finished, done over. Right, it's in the past. Yeah. And it's formed pretty simply, actually. You just use a helping verb. Okay. Either haben or sein. Plus the past participle of the main verb, the participle to. Right, right, that participle second. But how do you choose between haben and sein? That's where I always get tripped up. Yeah, it's a common stumbling block for sure. Yeah. But there's a logic to it. Most verbs use haben, especially if they're describing an action. Okay. Like, take a look at page 178 in Spectrum Deutsch. Oh, yeah. It says, Peter hat für die Prüfung gelernt. Peter studied for the exam. Mm -hmm. So there, hat is our helping verb, and gelernt is the past participle of lernen, to study. Okay, that makes sense. So when does sein come in? Sein usually steps in for verbs that express motion or a change of state, like going somewhere, becoming something, or even just existing in a certain condition. Right, so if I'm talking about going from point A to point B or transforming in some way, I should probably think sein. Exactly. Let's look at exercise six on page 180 of Spectrum Deutsch. It's a good example. we got to decide whether to use haben or sein to form the perfect for each sentence. All right, so the first one is Ben arbeitet als Kommissar bei der Polizei. Mm -hmm. So Ben works as a police commissioner. Haben or sein? Hmm. Well, arbeiten is just describing his job, right? Yeah. No movement or change of state, so we'd go with haben. Okay. The perfect form would be Ben hat als Kommissar bei der Polizei gearbeitet. Got it. So the focus is on the meaning of the verb and whether it implies motion or transformation. Precisely. With practice, it'll become second nature, I promise. How about this one? Eva construiert autos. Eva designs cars. Okay, so construir is to design. At first glance, it seems like an action verb. But designing a car, that involves a transformation, right? Yeah. Going from an idea to a physical object. So maybe it is sign. You got it. It's all about thinking a little deeper about what the verb really means. So the perfect would be, Eva is autos construiert. Right. And the past participle comes at the end when we use sign. Yes. Word order can be so tricky in German, but I guess that's part of what makes it fun. Absolutely. It's like a puzzle, figuring out where all the pieces fit. Now, remember that YouTube video we mentioned uh, about verbs that use sign? Yeah, yeah. It highlights some really common ones that can trip people up. There were a few that stood out to me. Passieren, geschehen. And bleiben. Can you give us some examples of those in perfect? Sure. Let's say, gestern ist ein Unfall passiert. An accident happened yesterday. So we use ist because passieren describes an event, a change of state from nothing happening to an accident occurring. That makes sense. What about geschehen? For geschehen, we could say, was ist letzte Nacht geschehen? What happened last night? Again, geschehen implies something taking place, a change of circumstances. So ist is a perfect fit. All right. Two down, one to go. Can be a good one with bleiben. Hmm. How about this? Ich bin zu Hause geblieben. I stayed at home. Okay. Here, bleiben signifies being in one location, no movement. So we use bin from sein. This is really helpful. We're getting a good grasp of how to form pair with both haben and sein. But what happens when we throw inseparable and inseparable verbs? Do those prefixes change things up? Oh, they sure do. A separable verbs where the prefix can detach have a special rule in perfect prefix hops over to the end of the sentence, right after the past participle. So, for example, if we take the verb anrufen, to call someone, it becomes angerufen in the past participle. And then the un goes all the way to the end. You got it. Like if you're saying, ich habe meinen Freund in angerufen, I called my friend. Right. The n is hanging out at the very end, after the past participle. So those separable prefixes like to party at the back of the sentence. They do. What about inseparable verbs? Are they a bit more well-behaved? Yeah. Inseparable verbs are more straightforward. Their prefixes stay glued to them, even in the perfect. No separation anxiety there. So, for example, with besuchen, 
to visit, the past participle bezuft stays as one happy unit. Exactly. No need to shuffle prefixes around. You could say, ich habe meine Oma besucht. I visited my grandmother. Nice and simple. Okay, I'm starting to feel much more confident about using perfect. We've covered a lot. The definition, haben versus sein, and even those pesky prefixes. We have. A solid foundation. Yeah. Now let's take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll tackle some of those irregular verbs, the ones that like to bend the rules a bit. Uh-oh. They can be tricky, but we'll break them down together. Sounds good. Blue moon, red menace, purple force, it's us Crocs! After making waves in Tokyo, Sydney, and Paris, their next stop is on your doorstep. Night City, expect the unexpected! Feeling tired, bored, powerless, not anymore. Experience all of Chromanticore's 16 new flavors and mix Mix it up! With the Kangtao G58T and Smart Rifle, your enemies will have nowhere left to hide. This is Kangtao. Welcome back. Now that we've got a good handle on the basics of perfect, let's jump into the wild world of irregular verbs. Ooh, irregular verbs sound scary. They might seem intimidating at first, but they're actually quite fascinating. Once you understand their, well, their quirks. All right. But first, can you remind me what makes a verb irregular? So irregular verbs are kind of like the rebels of the German language. They don't follow those usual patterns for forming the past participle. Uh Uh-oh. Instead of just adding a T or an N, they they like to change their stem vowels. So they're like those unpredictable friends always keeping you on your toes. Exactly. And just like those friends, once you get to know them, you really start to appreciate their unique personalities. Okay. One of the most common irregular verbs is sein, meaning to see. Yeah, sein, I know that one. Its past participle isn't gesehen, like you might expect, but gesehen. Oh, right, the stem vowel changes. You got it. And there are a bunch of others that like to play these vowel swapping games. Okay. Listen, to read, becomes gelesen. Fahren, to drive or travel, transforms into gefahren. And sprechen, to speak, morphs into gesprochen. Whoa. Those are some serious vowel makeovers. Is there any way to predict these changes, or do we just have to memorize them all? Well, memorization is definitely part of it. Oh, okay. But there are some patterns you can look out for. Okay, good. For instance, many irregular verbs with an E in the stem like to switch it to an A or an O in the past participle. So, given, to give, becomes gegeben. You got it. And nemen, to take, becomes genomen. See, there's a method to the madness. Okay, so it's not just random chaos. Not at all. And the more you encounter these verbs in context, the easier it will be to remember their irregular forms. Right. It's like learning the names of new friends. It takes a little effort at first, but then it becomes second nature. I like that analogy. Can <laughs> we can we befriend a few more irregular verbs right now? How about essen and trinken? Those seem pretty crucial for, you know, everyday conversations. Absolutely. Essen, to eat, becomes gegessen in the perfect. And trinken... To drink changes to get trunken. Gedessen and get trunken. I can almost taste those words. Yeah. They sound so satisfying, like a delicious meal or a refreshing drink. Exactly. They have that sense of completion, which is, you know, what perfect is all about. Hmm. But hold on. We can't forget about sane and haben themselves. They're irregular verbs, too. Oh, that's right. They've been so busy helping other verbs form the perfect, we almost forgot they have their own past participles. What are they? So sein, to be, becomes gewesen in the perfect. And haben, to have, transforms into gehabt. Definitely worth noting those down. Okay, yeah, those are important ones. So these irregular verbs are starting to feel a bit less like scary monsters and more like, well, quirky characters I'm getting to know. That's the spirit. But how does this all come together in actual conversations? How can I use perfect to talk about my own experiences in a natural way? That's a great question. And that's where the real fun begins. Think about all the times you talk about things that have already happened. Okay. You tell stories, you recount your day, share memories. All these situations call for perfect. You're right. It's not just about grammar rules. It's about, you know, bringing the past to life. Exactly. And that's what makes learning a language so rewarding. It's not just about memorizing words and rules. It's about gaining the ability to express yourself and connect with others in a meaningful way. Totally. Okay, I'm feeling inspired to put my perfect skills to the test. Good. But before we wrap up, there's one more thing I'm curious about. Okay. We focus a lot on completed actions, but what about those times when something started in the past and continues into the present? Does German have a tense for that too? 
You're talking about a situation where, you know, the past is still very much present. Right, yeah. Like a bridge between two points in time. And yes, German has a tense for that. And it's called. Perfect again. But how can the same tense be used for both completed actions and actions that are still ongoing? That's confusing. It might seem counterintuitive, I know. But it all comes down to context and the way we use certain words. When perfect is used for an action that began in the past and continues into the present, we often use time phrases like sight, meaning since, or schon, meaning already. So if I wanted to say I've been living in Berlin for five years, I could use perfect with Zeit. Exactly. You could say ich wohne seit fünf Jahren in Berlin. Okay. Notice how the verb wohnen, to live, is imperfect, even though the action of living in Berlin is still ongoing. Ah, uh, I see. It's the time phrase, seit fünf Jahren, that clarifies that this isn't a completed action, but rather one that started in the past and continues in the present. Precisely. It's like a secret code that tells us the past is still very much alive and relevant to the present moment. So perfect is like a chameleon, adapting its meaning based on the words around it. It is indeed. And that's what makes German grammar so intriguing. It's full of these subtle nuances that add depth and richness to the language. Okay, I'm starting to feel like I'm unlocking the secrets of the German language. Ah, uh, good. One tense at a time. But before I get too carried away, maybe we should take a break and let all this new information sink in. Sounds like a good plan. And when we return for our final segment, we'll explore how perfect can be used to create dynamic and engaging narratives. Bring your German storytelling skills to the next level. Come to Lizzie's to come at Lizzie's. Home to Night City's hottest, realest BDs. Hey, you there. Yes, I'm talking to you. Are you getting what you want out of life? Let me guess. Food from a tube, rusty water from the tap, another murder outside your bedroom window. But what if you could leave all that behind? Far, far behind when you begin your journey to the final frontier. Send the word SPACE to 7299 for a chance to win a one-week getaway for two at the Crystal Palace. Ten casinos, five pools, top-end brain dance equipment, and the best chefs in the universe. If you're looking for a taste of paradise, don't wait a microsecond longer. Send space to 7299 right now. The Crystal Palace. Feel alive in the dead of space. Welcome back. I'm excited to keep going with our perfect deep dive. We've learned so much about this tense already. It's true. Perfect is like a, well, it has so many sides to it. We've seen how it works with those regular and irregular verbs, how to choose between haben and sein, and even how it can express actions that continue into the present. Yeah. And now I'm ready to take it a step further. Okay. You mentioned that perfect can be used to create really dynamic narratives. Yeah. So how can I use it to bring my German storytelling to life? That's a great question. It gets to the heart of why we learn languages to communicate, to connect, and to share our experiences. And perfect is a really powerful tool for doing that, especially when it comes to storytelling. Give me some examples. How can perfect make my German stories more captivating? Think of it this way. Perfect lets you highlight those key moments, those completed actions that really shape the narrative. Like a film director, choosing which scenes to emphasize, which details to focus on. So instead of just listing events in chronological order, yeah. I can use perfect to create a sense of drama or suspense. Exactly. Let's say you're telling a story about a trip you took. Instead of saying, I went to the museum, then I ate lunch, then I went shopping, you could say, Ich bin früh aufgestanden, habe ein leckeres Frühstück gegessen und bin dann ins Museum gegangen. Okay. I got up early, ate a delicious breakfast, and then went to the museum. I see. So using perfect for those actions like aufgestanden, gegessen, gegangen makes them stand out. It gives the story more life. Right. You can use perfect to create anticipation too. Like, ich habe stundenlang auf dem Bus gewartet und als er endlich angekommen ist, war er voll. Oh, wow. I waited for the bus for hours and when it finally arrived, it was full. Oh, no. I can feel the frustration in that sentence. The perfect verbs gewartet and angekommen really emphasize the wait and then the disappointment. Yeah. And that's the beauty of perfect. It lets you inject your stories with emotion, personality, and a sense of your own unique perspective. This is really helpful. I'm starting to see perfect in a whole new light now. It's mm -hmm. not just about grammar rules. It's about, well, wielding the power of language to craft compelling narratives. That's it. 
And the more you practice using perfect in your storytelling, the more natural it will become. You'll find yourself effortlessly weaving together past events in a way that really captivates your listeners. I'm ready to go out and practice my German storytelling right now. Yeah. But before we wrap up this deep dive, is there anything else you'd like to share about perfect? Any final words of wisdom? Well, just remember that language learning is a journey. There will be bumps along the way, you know, moments of frustration, times when you feel like you're not making progress. But don't give up. Embrace the challenge, celebrate the small victories, and never lose sight of the joy of connecting with others through language. I love that. And with perfect, even the trickiest parts of grammar can become tools for creative expression. Yes. So keep practicing, keep exploring, and keep diving deep into that fascinating world of German. Exactly. And until next time, keep those stories flowing. <laughs> Red Menace, Purple Force, it's us, Crocs! After making waves in Tokyo, Sydney, and Paris, their next stop is on your doorstep. Night City, expect the unexpected!